Florida man who considered himself to be the anointed prince of God was put to death in 2013 despite his history of paranoid schizophrenia. Cecil Clayton, a man who after a sawmill incident was left with an IQ of 71 and four-fifths of his frontal lobe, was executed last month in a Missouri prison. Since 1983, over 60 intellectually disabled individuals have been executed within the United States, according to deathpenalty.org. Now personally, this makes me question the integrity of the entire capital punishment system. But today I'm just going to talk to you about its intersection with uh, intellectual disability. Now when I say intellectual disability, I mean either a low IQ or an individual who suffers from a mental illness. Now I recognize that these 60 individuals or were guilty of incredibly heinous crimes. Yet I find it equally heinous for a modern nation to execute 60 intellectually disabled individuals in the name of justice. Now, the execution of an intellectually disabled person amounts to cruel and unusual punishment. And because of that, the standards for the determination of an individual's aptitude for execution need to be severely revised. Now, First today, I'm going to talk to you about the legal problems associated with the execution of the intellectually disabled. I'll then go on to look at a current system that's in place in a prominent state. And finally, I'll conclude with some specific reforms that are needed if confidence in our justice system is to remain. Now, our nation's judicial branch has ruled on numerous occasions that the execution of the intellectually disabled violates the Eighth Amendment. Uh, Ford v. Wainwright clearly states this, and in the 1986 decision, uh, Justice Powell stated that the Eighth Amendment forbids the execution only of those who are unaware of the punishment they are about to suffer and why they are to suffer it. Uh, Atkins v. Virginia, uh, the court uh, renewed this, uh, this statement, making the, uh, the statement that death is not a suitable punishment for a mentally retarded criminal. And they went on to quote Ford v. Wainwright, saying, we therefore conclude that such punishment is excessive and that the Constitution places a substantive restriction on the state's power to take the life of a mentally retarded offender. Now the main reason that the court has a problem with the execution of the intellectually disabled is that it serves no penological purpose. Um, when you execute someone who doesn't know why they're being executed, that punishment is meaningless. Now clearly the courts have made their decision but the current systems that are in place enable the execution of individuals like the two I discussed earlier. I'll provide you with the example of Texas, which is arguably the worst in the nation when it comes to uh, executing intellectually disabled individuals. Texas uses a very controversial uh, method of determining intellectual disability that's called the Bresenio factors. Uh, here, here's a quote that illustrates this. Um, most Texas citizens might agree that Steinbeck's Lenny should, by virtue of his lack of reasoning ability and adaptive skills, be exempt from the death penalty, that is. Now, if a Texan on death row is as incompetent as a character from a 1937 novel, they don't have to be executed. Now, the ACLU has railed against this, saying that it lacks any basis in professional, medical, or scientific standards concerning intellectual disability. But still, this is a method that's being used in our nation today. Now, Texas also uses uh, a series of governor-appointed competency panels that give advice to the court. But that's all they do is give advice. The court actually does not have to heed their advice, even though these individuals are experts in their field. So clearly, change is needed if confidence in our justice system is to be restored. To reinstill that confidence, we need to tackle these issues in a quantifiable and practical manner that addresses inmate health and at the same time doesn't possess major loopholes. So in light of that, my first proposal is that each state institute mandatory men, uh, mental health screenings and competency hearings every six months. Now, usually these things are held just before an execution, yet sometimes that can be too late for an individual. So by um, instituting them every six months, we would be able to monitor each uh, individual's health uh, and uh, uh, be able to main, uh, institute changes in their routine uh, to keep them healthy. Uh, this would keep them aware of their crimes and maintain the integrity of our system. Uh, my second proposal is that each state outlaw the execution of anyone with an IQ of lower than 75. Now the Supreme Court case Hall Florida uh, stated that an IQ cutoff of 70, quote, goes against unanimous professional consensus, end quote. 
Instead, they placed the cutoff at 75, which the American uh, Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities says, quote, indicates a limitation in intellectual function, end quote. In, in other words, this would prevent the execution of those who may or may not know right from wrong. Now, uh, my final proposal is that once uh, an individual is found to be intellectually disabled, either by low IQ or a mental uh, illness, their sentence must be immediately changed to life without parole. Uh, now this would be after a series of um, expert uh, testimony and tests, um, and the system is actually currently being used in Maryland, and it prevents the execution of an individual for reasons other than their health. So if you have a schizophrenic man, you can't uh, medicate him to be healthy enough to be executed. Once he's declared to be schizophrenic, execution is off the table. So, to conclude, changes are being made, even in Texas. Uh, Scott Panetti, um, a severely schizophrenic man who uh, attempted to subpoena John F. Kennedy and the Pope during his competency he hearing, um, recently had his sentence stayed after it was backed by a group of conservative lawmakers, uh, including former Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, this group made the statement that the execution of Panetti would be a moral scandal that would only undermine confidence in such a system as the American justice system. Uh, Panetti hadn't had a um, hearing in, uh, like a mental health hearing in seven years, and um, he was declared sane enough to be executed by one psychologist. Uh, he was only eight hours away from being executed. So as this illustrates, uh, changes are being made, but um, uh, we need to do more if confidence in our justice system is to remain. Thank you.